What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? Greg here, joined by John. How are you? I'm I'm in a daze. We just got out of watching Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Leave a like. Don't forget to do that. Now we're shooting this in Burbank. We got our friend Aaron holding the camera. Burbank's really serious about shit around here. At any moment, we could be tackled by security. <laughs> I know. Like, what are you doing here? Stop filming. <laughs> Pay us for this time. <laughs> now, in case you don't know anything about this film, there's going to be no spoilers here. In this movie, it takes place after the passing of T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman. As you see in the trailers, there's people who are seeing this as a moment of vulnerability for Wakanda. They're trying to take vibranium. This movie's two hours and 40 something minutes. There's a lot of plot, even involving why Namor and them are fighting, that is just not revealed in the trailers. I know some people don't care if they talk about it, but because the marketing didn't put it out there, I don't want to put it out there. But know this, the movie's like a really long film, and I thought every second, every minute of it was so justified. I loved this movie so much. When I saw the trailers, I kept saying it, it feels like it's going to be so much about grief and having to work together through grief, simultaneously be badass. I found myself like crying for a variety of different reasons from beginning to end, feeling hopeful, feeling just so shattered. My brain feels foggy from all the crying at this very moment. It is the most powerful MCU movie I have seen, the, easily the most emotional. It felt like such a necessary experience for everyone involved with this movie. It feels so purposeful. It's like an epic drama is how I would describe it, you know? Yeah, that's a good take. Before we go into like Namor, Shuri, Angela Bassett, my god. Ramonda, yeah. John, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm similarly dazed because it is such a cathartic experience and because it does intermingle so much with actual life. Yeah, there are crazy high concept things happening on screen and yet it still feels completely personal the entire time and every action feels motivated by the grief and vulnerability that everybody on screen is feeling for different reasons and, you know, coming out of the previous movie, it still maintains all of that geopolitical intrigue because obviously in the place we rejoin Wakanda, they are in a globally vulnerable state, not just an emotionally vulnerable state. You get this interesting mixture where so much of the action, literally even the fighting that happens on screen, does feel like it is coming from the same place as a lot of the dramatic scenes. It is, you know, the most powerful and the most meaningful and the most impactful MCU movie probably in... It's rousing as hell It at is, times, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in the way of like how an Endgame is rousing. You yeah, know? it's not it, on your left. It, yeah, but it, it is like it, it has a life affirming quality just as much as it is about grieving the loss yeah. of somebody. And there are some really beautiful cultural motifs that they use to drive that home that really sing beyond all the other stuff that you're expecting that is there too. Like it's still thrilling and it's still fun and it's still endearing in ways. But yeah, there is a pall that they don't turn away from that is cast over the entire proceedings. And even characters who aren't going through what the Wakandans are going Going through have similarly vital motivations and griefs of their own to rectify between everyone in Wakanda to everyone in Talokan and in between there's so much life and culture and beauty on display that it's weird. So many people, I think, would want to imagine this movie any other way if it meant Chadwick could be here, and I certainly would probably trade for that reality, but at the same time, the, on the timeline we live on, this does feel like a unique snapshot of a moment that also gets to be all the MCU stuff you want it to be, too, and I think that's really special. There are some really just powerful performances in here. It's the, the best, I think, out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'll be honest, like, I was, well, I was looking forward to Shuri, but I wasn't exactly walking into this film going can't wait to see what Letitia Wright does for some reason I just wasn't in that mindset what I noticed was that there are times where when she had scenes where she was like displaying joy or happiness I would start to tear up or cry because her portrayal here carries this this ever-growing pain throughout the entire film that's coming out in all kinds of ways of aggression and anger and drive. It would just break my heart whenever I would see her happy, <laughs> you know? And I'll, it's it's that kind of, it's, 
It's getting me right now. It would just mess me up because you could see how palpable and how much it just resonates throughout the entire film because that's what this film is so much about is everyone struggling emotionally right now and we're just trying to keep moving and everyone's threatening us and the only way we can stay together through such a tumultuous time is by banding together so that phrase like calling this Wakanda forever I felt that way more than the first Black Panther way more than whenever it's been said I felt that like yeah Wakanda forever you just feel that phrase that mantra but it's such a personal film <laughs> like yeah, it's so yeah. personal it's two hours and 40 minutes for a reason it is a slow moving film that will have action scenes that are just so intense like this is cinema all right this is james cameron you would <laughs> cameron, love this movie Scorsese, <laughs> yeah. all you guys sit you down love, this is a great film there are these action scenes in here where the intensity it's suspenseful it's engaging and you're watching characters even on the side of namor they're not atlantean <laughs> what are they called? The tele tele Yeah, they call them a different I thing. Forget here. The, I forget how you adapt telecon yeah. into its people's name, but yeah. Even with them, it's everyone's just trying to do their best, and they have these core themes about family and about vengeance and about how to cope. And it's just like that in this giant, massive, expensive ass film at the same time. Namor. <laughs> he was so threatening and, and he's easily one of the best Marvel villains. I was halfway through watching him monologue at one scene and then I got pulled out for a split second going, holy shit, this guy's incredible. I know. Because I haven't even thought about like how great he's doing because he's so- He just feels he like just this fits. character. Yeah, yeah. He, just, he just is this person. You get entirely where he's coming from. The flying, the action scenes with him are awesome. And as much as you get where he's coming from, he also pisses you off so much at times. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> great dichotomy they draw because he is completely understandable and yet he is your antagonist for various reasons and it's really effectively done. It does not succumb to the stereotype of like, oh, you're just kind of going up against yourself. Like, it definitely avoids that and it gives you somebody with a clear motive, a clear purpose that you can, again, continuing that line from what we got with Killmonger, it's like you, you understand where this guy's coming from, but more so even than Killmonger, I would argue. Angela Bassett, I believe, deserves an Oscar nomination for this. I don't think I've said that about an MCU performance. The strength and poise and the amount of command she has on the screen You've seen Angela Bassett do an intense performance, but there is so much more percolating underneath that, yeah, like, <laughs> I would absolutely yeah. agree. I'm like, please nominate her. Like, I know you keep saying pain doesn't sound like a fun movie, <laughs> but it's like a necessary pain. It's like you're grieving through with these characters. You're doing all this necessary world building, and you're exploring Talo Khan. Like, there's so much. I'm like, wow, the trailers didn't show you so much. There's so much beauty on display. Denai Guerrera as a Koye. Just, you know, like, man, you miss, you miss T'Challa, you miss Chadwick, what Ryan Coogler and company gave with their performers here. This is the performance of them that I'm going to remember. Every True. one of them. First Black Panther, I'm like, I really like them, but it's, of course, Chadwick and Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Those are the ones you think of. It's a true like, ensemble piece. Masterful performances. And yeah, it is. I'm sorry for talking no. so much. And Baku, Winston Duke, total <laughs> blast to kick it with. Scene stealer. Riri Williams was the quality of this film I was concerned about. This film obviously is looked at as something so personal. I felt, are we going to get distracted by them trying to set up Ironheart? <laughs> you know? yeah. She's a very important character in this film, and she fits yeah. perfectly. Yeah. It is not just, hey, look out for Ironheart. <laughs> yeah. like, Come got a fun on side character. Hey. It is not that. She felt like such a real person. This friendship that she forms with Shuri. By the time you know the movie was ending, I was like, oh, no, I, I want to still see them hang out. <laughs> I want to I want to still see them together. And it makes you hope that Shuri will appear somewhere in Ironheart to just continue that rapport they have. Everything to me comes back to Letitia Wright for this film. Whatever personal opinions you have about Letitia Wright, everything comes back to me about, like, it circles around her. She was perfect. Absolutely mesmerizing. Cheetah Nyong'o, oh my oh. god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yeah, like, revelatory. And, and the way especially she is used in the movie, without saying much, is interesting and does come with very much catharsis and a lot of its own tough emotion that is unique. It's like you have everyone sharing, you know, a certain amount of grief, obviously, but I feel like at the center of the story you have Shuri, but you also have Nakia in a way that... You 
you know, isn't really a part of what people are talking about or what's being pitched to you, but she is one of the brightest parts of the movie, I feel like. When you see the trailer, you know, what you're hearing a lot about is they've lost their leader, and now it falls on the remaining people in Wakanda to carry on the legacy and to take a stand and, and, and show their strength still. So what they did with this film was they went, okay, let's not try to find a new lead. Let's instead really hone in on our supporting players from the last movie and make them the leads. As tragic as it is, as beautiful as a tribute as this film is, like you feel Chadwick Boseman's missing presence and presence throughout. You feel his spirit imbued in everything. Like when you say the missing presence, it's not like the movie's not good because this would have been good if yeah, Chadwick no, was That's in. not what we're saying. You, you feel the longing, that weight of the loss of someone. But weirdly, I felt like they came out with a film that was better yeah. than the first one. Personally, for me, I feel like this is a better film. The action's really great. And imaginative and dazzling. Yeah, this is like the Wakanda version of the Winter Soldier action in some ways, you know? A little bit I, of that Aquaman wonder. I think they made the underwater stuff look better than Aquaman. It yeah. felt real, more real versus, not trying to make this like a Marvel versus DC comparison, it just felt actually real. The music by, oh, this is some of the oh. absolute, this is Absolutely. a cinematic score. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know? it feels spiritual throughout, and it takes those motifs from the previous movie, but it builds on them in really wonderful ways. It uses vocalizations, and two, it crosses cultural boundaries because you are dealing with ancient, uh, I think they, they name-check Ma Mayan, the Mayans. Mayan. Yeah, it's like, you know, you have so much... Hang in there. To add in <laughs> <laughs> beyond <laughs> the, the music of Wakanda that, that just makes it feel so much more rich and alive and all the flourishes, like you can really feel the elegant quality of the tones that they pull. The sound design's amazing. The makeup and effects are, are awesome. My only real problem with the film is that at times, and it's not like, oh, Marvel Phase 4, you know, the, just the crap you crap on with the Marvel Phase 4 is CGI. It is like there are times, in the, especially in the finale, where you're like, yeah, it's some very noticeable CGI. But when I was thinking that, I was going, what movie doesn't with a hat that re yeah. relies on CGI? Some shots will inevitably yeah. be a bit better than others. Nobody has yeah. all the time they needed. Even the greatest technological-looking movie of, at the time it comes out, you will have moments that go, man, eh, it looks fake. Like some other minor qualms I might have with the movie, because yeah, I do think it does a fantastic job world building and handling this ensemble, because it is very well written. The entire thing is motivated within characters. It's a big film, but it's also extremely character driven. But at times the editing can feel a tad off pace, but out of two hours and 40 minutes, that thought maybe crossed my mind at a very small handful of times. And there's, there's the humor works. And there's only one scene of humor that felt like typical quote unquote Marvel comedy. But the rest of the scenes that make you laugh, they don't feel that way. I thought this was a, a, a damn near perfect experience and exactly what I thought it should be, and more than what I wanted it to be or expected it to be. I, I thought it was great. There's a heavy toll throughout, but also inspiring and hopeful. They just take different directions with characters you just wouldn't expect. And yes, the, uh, perhaps the best post credit scene because it's a legit, powerful scene <laughs> and yeah. not just like, Hey, huh? what's coming next? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's very, very spiritually in line with the movie. It makes sense to separate it and make it the coda and I think it's a really elegant use. Yeah, it feels like the real ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, th I think it was a really elegant choice to do it that way. Like it could have ended when, where it ended, but the post credit yeah. feels like, no, this is the real ending. <laughs> and it does seem like the kind of movie that will give you more on repeat viewings for sure. I want to watch it a couple more times, but could be my favorite of the, it's just above Thor 11 Thunder. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be my favorite. Uh, I, I don't know yet. Uh, I have to watch it again. What'd you guys think? Subscribe, leave a like, click that bell. Uh, um, yeah, Wakanda forever. This was this is one experience I'm never gonna forget. No, never, <laughs> never. It was awesome. This is truly unique.